Good morning. Uh, welcome to a morning worship at All Saints Church in Wellington. Uh, my name's David. I'm one of the team at All Saints Church and it's really good to welcome you um, as we gather to worship this morning. I hope your weekend's going well. For those of you that have just joined us, we've had a discussion of all the stuff we've been up to uh, this weekend. And for some of us, maybe it, it was a joyful weekend doing things that were fun uh, and enjoying ourselves. And for other people, maybe it wasn't as uh, wasn't as fun as they'd have wanted it to be. But however we're feeling this morning, we come to a God who loves us uh, and a God who longs to be with us and a God who blesses us with his presence. Everything you need today will be on the screen, and that includes the words, and the songs, and the liturgy that we've had. If the words are in bold, I'd invite you to say them with me, um, even if you might be there, just a few of you, or even on your own. We say them and we declare it together um, as the church, some words of truth that help us to be with each other, if not physically, um, in, in, in the spirit, I guess, as it were. So we're going to begin with an opening prayer. Maybe just a moment to be still. I know if you've got little ones, that's not always as easy as it could be. But just to get ourselves in the place to meet with Jesus this morning. And I invite you to say the words with me in bold. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Faithful one whose word is life. Come with saving power to free our praise. Inspire our prayer and help us live for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing of our opening song of a God who reigns forever and it gives us strength as we wait on him. So let's praise God together.
Yes, amen. You are Jesus, the everlasting God. You do not faint. You won't grow weary. We do indeed love you. And we come to confess to God those things we've done this week that we know we shouldn't have done those times we let him down. Uh, knowing that he loves us and he accepts us and he forgives us. So again, as I said before, I do invite you to join in with the words in bold when we get there. So God, our Father, we're sorry for the times when we've used your gifts carelessly, we've acted ungratefully. Hear our prayer. And in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest, but we sometimes forget that you've given them to us. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but we ignore the cry of the hungry. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We are thoughtless and we do not care enough for the world you've made. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We store up goods for ourselves alone as if there were no God and no heaven. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. A promise of forgiveness right out of scripture for us this morning. It's a really well known one. 1 John 1 9. In fact, let's begin in verse 8. It says, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, he is faithful. He is just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. We're forgiven and more than that, we're purified. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, I was trying to be clever and turning myself down because the children are being a bit uh, children-like. <laughs> Bless them in the other room. But never mind. You can hopefully hear me now. Um, all I was saying is that, funnily enough, children are part of our church family. And if you're here this morning and you've got little ones with you, if you go onto our Facebook page and go down a bit, you will see um, that um, there's some activities for you to be getting up with with your little ones. There's some colouring in sheets and, and things like that for them to do. Um, there's also a Zoom room afterwards for them to, um, to to get in with and to join in with. But what I'd like us to do in a minute, we're gonna watch a couple of clips from the film Toy Story. Um, and I want us to think about, while we're watching them, think about humility. What does it mean to be humble? And, and one of the things it means to be humble is to accept that maybe we're not always right, that we're not the best, and that other people have something to teach us. And that can be difficult, can't it? To, to be humble and to accept that other people um, can be good at things we're good at. Other people can have the same passions that we have. Other people can even be better at things than we are. That can be hard, can't it? And we're gonna hear from two well-known characters called Woody and Buzz. And we're gonna see how a Woody goes from really struggling with humility at the beginning to become a bit more humble. So over to them. I'll need to have it on a little video cassette player. But what we saw there um, is Woody and Buzz beginning and not getting on with each other. Woody especially feeling really threatened and not being particularly pleasant. But eventually after spending time with each other uh, and being humble and acknowledging that they could learn from each other 
and, and let go of the past and acknowledge that they, they made mistakes. They became firm friends. And I don't know about you, uh, but sometimes there are things I've done in the past that I'm not proud of, and we've already said sorry for them. I can think of times when I should have been a bit more humble. And we look to Jesus, don't we? And he is the ultimate example of someone who humbled himself. We read that in Philippians. It says he humbled himself, becoming the form of a servant. And he came down and he, he died for us. And we're going to sing about that now. We're going to sing of a God who chose the cross, who was humble enough to take my place to, on the cross. Let's sing together. <laughs> Amen. And we're going to come to our Bible readings now. So you might want to get your Bible ready. And we're going to hear um, after that um, from Nick. So over to our Bible time. Thank you. Our New Testament reading this morning comes from Philippians chapter 2. And I'm reading verses 1 to 11. Philippians chapter 2. And I'm reading verses 1 to 11. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition 
or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationship with one another, have the same attitude of mind Christ Jesus had, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness and found being found in appearance as a human being, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. The reading today is from Mark 10, verse 35 to 45. The request of James and John. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So good morning and uh, welcome to my man cave. Uh, So this morning we're going to continue to look at uh, one of the core values that we hold here at All Saints. And that's loving each other. Values shouldn't necessarily be viewed as something to strive for. But rather these are the things that make up who we are. These are the things that define our character as a community and as Christians. We believe loving each other is one of the very attributes of God that has been placed among us and and through us, through the Holy Spirit. Loving each other will be expressed in several ways. Like last week, we looked at how forgiving one another is an expression of not only God's love for us, but how we love one another. And today we're going to be thinking through humility, the act of counting others as more significant than ourselves sacrificially putting the needs of others above our own. So for me, there's no better just no better description of what humility looks like than how Paul describes Jesus in his letter to the Philippians when he said, who though he, Jesus, was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, Being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. But I really like how the Message Bible puts it. It said, he had equal status with God 
but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave, became human, and having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredibly humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death. And the worst kind of death at that, a crucifixion. So if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and that he came to this earth to die the death, that we had coming to us, so that we might live the eternal life that only he deserves, then it's plain to see that God, the God we worship, is one who expresses humility towards us. It's all right. God is God. He can choose to be as arrogant or as humble as he wants, and he chooses to serve rather than to be served. But thankfully, our Creator chooses to take the path of humility. And just think about it. Thankfully, God didn't choose the arrogant route, the route that says, if you can't live up to my standards, then who needs you? Instead, through Jesus, he chose to live among us. As one of us, experiencing the results of the sins of this world just like any of us. He experienced temptation, what it's like to be in poverty, what it's like to be weak and scared. He experienced the full human condition. And he didn't go through all of this for his own benefit, but he did it for ours. And Psalm 113 says, Who is like the Lord our God, the one who sits enthroned on high? who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. Jesus' actions weren't out of character or unlike anything God had ever done before. As Psalm 113 points out, this is who God is. God, by his very nature, exemplified through Jesus, is a God that serves rather than demands to be served. And as the body of Christ, the church, we are being called, challenged, and equipped by the Holy Spirit to live the same, to have the same mindset among ourselves as Christ. And humility isn't just being charitable to those in need or trying to lift up others. Humility is the opposite of boastful pride. It's the absence of pride. And sometimes our charitable acts do more for stroking our egos than benefit anyone else. In Matthew 6, 3, Jesus warns, When you give to the needy, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Because there's a part of us, that sinful nature that we have, that wants recognition for our giving. We want something in return. And we can take pride in how humble we appear. Our egos can be stroked when those we serve look up to us, as if we are better than them, as if we are the solution to their problems. And the truly sad thing about prideful charity is that those who habitually depend upon charity believe that they are nothing more than a charity case. And prideful charity does nothing but confirm this lie that they believe about themselves. Jesus takes things even further. In Luke 6, 35, Jesus says, But love your enemies, and do good, lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be the sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. But I'd just like to close by putting just a, maybe a, a spin on these, this perspective of what it, look, what it looks like to put the other's needs above our own. You know that feeling that oftentimes stirs up when someone really wants to serve you and bless you? Oftentimes our immediate response is to say, no, I can't accept this. Kind of like how Peter first responded when Jesus was washing his feet. Before moving to England, we had to raise financial support to be able to move here as missionaries. And I remember one lady in particular that gave me a check for a substantial amount of money 
And I know this woman. She doesn't have a lot to give. And so when she hands me this check, I, I just say to her, no, 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 I can't accept this. It's too much. I'll never forget. She looked me right in the eyes and said, you're going to take it. You need it. And you're not going to rob me of God's blessing. And so I reluctantly accepted the money. But there is something so empowering and faithfully and sacrificially giving to others. It lifts us up, doesn't it? And on the other end, there's also something so humiliating and being on the receiving end of charity. And I think that's why Jesus chose to carry out his ministry the way he did. In the opening lines of Luke chapter 8, Luke describes how Jesus was going through cities and villages proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. And then he lists this group of women who were providing for him and his disciples out of their own means, meaning Jesus' ministry was dependent upon the charitable acts of others. Where Jesus slept at night and what he ate was dependent upon others. And when Jesus sends out his disciples two by two in Luke chapter 10, he says, take no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, take nothing with you and search for those who are willing to take you in. And when you find those people who take you in, stay. Don't go from house to house, but stay and eat whatever they put before you. They may not be like you. They may not eat what you like. They may not believe what you believe, but stay with them. Jesus was putting his disciples in a position that he was in, where in order to follow him and to do as he commands, they're going to learn what it means to be humble. And I just wonder, if the Holy Spirit is challenging us to go further in our humility, we like to be the one that is blessing others and serving others. And I think we as a church do this quite well. But like those women who cared for Jesus and his disciples out of their own means, that had to elevate them. And like that woman who gave to me, she felt like she was the one being blessed through her giving. Sometimes the best way that we can put others above ourselves is by allowing them to serve us, to be empowered, to be elevated, and in some cases to no longer be the charity case, but the giver. So the next time someone offers to bless you, don't respond out of that initial gut reaction that you might feel, but, re but rather just check yourself. Make sure that gut reaction isn't your pride that may be hindering someone from being lifted up. When God first called Abraham, one of the first promises God made was when he said, I will bless those who bless you. So, Lord, forgive us when our pride gets in the way of allowing others to be the blessing and to be blessed. Please give us this, the faith and the strength to be humble. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Nick. And our next song really um, builds on what Nick has said, gives us a chance to respond but I wonder if before we sing, we just have a moment of quiet to welcome the Holy Spirit to confirm what, he is, what it is he's challenging us about. So if you're able to, uh, maybe let's just have a moment of quiet, of stillness, and we pray, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, confirm in our hearts what it is you, you would have challenge us with that Nick has shared this morning. I do get the sense that for some of us there's a real a real sense that we are struggling with with that call to, to accept help or to to allow other people to be a blessing to us. Um, so if that echoes with you particularly this morning 
Um, that's that stood out for me. Maybe that's something that stood out for you. If that is true and you'd like someone to pray for you, just um, write in the comment stream that you'd like someone to pray with you and we can either do it in the comments and one of the prayer team will, will respond in that way or, or we can do it um, on Messenger um, or something like that later on. But with that challenge um, in our hearts, let's continue to, to reflect and to give the Holy Spirit time to move as we sing, This is our God, the Servant King.
Amen. And we're going to continue in prayer to our servant king. Thank you, Nigel. Let us pray. Our concerns us all, and with the COVID-19 pandemic uppermost in the news and in our thoughts, this week our prayers concentrate on health, both nationally and for those of us who have more personal and immediate concerns. God of health and wholeness, we thank you for the ministry of Jesus to the sick, demonstrating that you want us to be well enough to live the abundant life your son promised. Give us a balanced understanding of our own health, not obsessing about aches and pains, but bringing our, to you our real needs and the needs of others who are in genuine distress. And in a few moments of quiet, let's all bring to the Lord those that we are aware of. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of health and wholeness, we think with gratitude of the skill and dedication of doctors and nurses, but also pray for the army of other health professionals, cooks, cleaners, ambulance crews, porters, technicians, researchers and managers, that they may be stained, sustained, rewarded and encouraged in the tasks they undertake. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of health and wholeness, we know that mental illness destroys the lives of some people and causes others to limp through life. Thank you that those who work in this field are often entrenched mental illness. Give them patience and enable them to see the deep value of every human life. In our prayers now, perhaps we could see Jesus coming alongside anyone we know who's suffering from depression or any other mental illness. Remembering that Jesus had a particular concern for those who experience this kind of oppression. See him there with that person now. What does he do? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of health and wholeness, we know that our well-being depends not only on the functioning of the body, but on a host of emotional and social factors. So we pray that we may offer generously to others the gift of friendship, kindness and community. May we identify social needs in our neighbourhood and try to meet them. May we exercise our responsibilities as citizens, both of our earthly community and of the Kingdom of Heaven. Bringing to, the, to light and, and bringing the light and life of Christ to any and all people in our neighbourhood. This week, make us alert to the possibility of making a difference in some way to somebody. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, good Lord, that through modern technology and the extra efforts of the staff team, we can still meet as a church, albeit virtually to receive your word and join in worship of you. And we pray that you will continue to uphold them in their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most weeks we mention in our prayers one of the mission agencies that we as a church support. This week we pray for the work of the Mission Aviation Fellowship, or MAF for short. This Christian organisation provides aviation communications and learning technology services to more than a thousand Christians and humanitarian agencies, as well as thousands of isolated missionaries and indigenous villagers in the world's most remote areas. As MAF have to adapt to different procedures and ways of doing things due to the pandemic, we pray for the pilots who fly missionaries to remote jungles and tra transport injured patients and carry supplies to inaccessible places. Pray that the Lord inspires and encourages MAF partner Bible translators in their translation work, as believers in remote places are hungry for God's word in their own language. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Know the collect for today, the first Sunday after Trinity.
O God, the strength of all those who put their faith trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us to help the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please now join me in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth, as in heaven, give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil because the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Um, usually for our morning worship service we um, have a short testimony video while we're having our collection. Um, it's quite hard to pass a plate around when we're so far apart but we've still got a testimony video this week um, and it's none other than my wonderful wife sharing a bit about how she uh, came to faith in Jesus. So here she is. Hi Kimmy. Hi. Um, so Kimberly is just going to tell us a bit of her story and her testimony. Uh, so Kimberly, have you always been a, a Christian? No, I haven't. Um, I was brought up in a non-Christian family. Um, didn't go to church, anything like that. Not not at Christmas, not at Easter, not ever. Um, and so did you start going? What what started you off going to church? Was it church that you went to first, or? Um, so my best friend is a Christian, and she invited me along to one of her youth group tea and toast it was called um so i went along with her a couple of times just because she was my best friend and i wanted to spend time with her um so we did that on a sunday night normally um yeah kind of just didn't but that didn't give me um it was just something to do really so what changed? What what? When did it go from just going somewhere that was church to something about Jesus? Um, so I went to university um, and I was encouraged by this friend and her family to go to the Christian Union there, which I went along to because one of my um, housemates, flatmates, was going along as well. She was a Christian, which was very exciting. So I went along with her to a couple of them and everybody was invited along to different churches so I tried out a few different churches um, which it was something to do really um, I made friends that was nice and eventually ended up going to the vineyard church and um, yeah so I went there for a bit and it just felt like going home really um, I'd go kind of week after week, became part of their family and I'd often look around thinking they've got something that I don't have, I want what they want, they, what they've got, I don't, don't know what that is or how to get it. Um, and after a, a little while of going I remember um, singing in worship and kind of suddenly realising this is it, I've got, I've got it, I don't know where this has come from but I've got what I wanted to have that they've got, um, which yeah, um, yeah, that was that was kind of when I realised actually I am a Christian. Jesus is in my life. Um, this thing that I haven't known what it was is the Holy Spirit. Um, chatted to people from the church, my church leaders. Um, and eventually they suggested I got baptised, which I did in my second year of uni, which was very exciting. And yeah, that's that really. 
So what's one thing that you might say to someone who's a bit like you, who maybe is listening to this and coming to church and likes it for the social aspect or likes seeing friends? But um, what might you say? Um, I think that was a big thing for me. Um, but I kind of always had that sense of there's something more. And I don't know what that something more is. Um, so if you're feeling like that, I'd encourage you to talk to somebody um, about what that might be. Um, and prayer as well I think prayer for me was people would suggest that I prayed about things and I kind of did but it was a bit like mm. um, and yeah I think getting that prayer and knowing that people were praying for me definitely helped me in that journey um, so yeah just just be open with people and ask them what what it's all about, what's going on, um, and be open to receive the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Kim. Amen. Thanks, Kimberly. And if that resonates with you, if something from that um, did resonate with you, and you're thinking, you know what, uh, I'm, as part of that, it is my journey, and you're not sure if you've yet made a, a commitment to Jesus, um, we'd love to talk to you about that. For some people, it's a definite moment. For others, like Kimberly was saying, it's more of a, a gentle journey when you realise that, that that's what's happened, but we'd love to talk to you about that. And there's something that Nick has said this morning about humility has spoken to you. Uh, please don't uh, go offline without uh, speaking to one of us about it. Drop us a message on our Facebook page, um, write something in the comments saying you'd like to talk to someone and we would love to talk with you and pray with you. We have got another song um, in a minute, but just some notices to end with. Um, next Saturday at, the Sh at Shawbirch at the Woolpack is a drive-through donation day. The last one was really um, successful. We've got six van loads of food to be, to be shared between the three different food banks in Telford. So if you've got some tins or you're going shopping this week and wouldn't mind um, getting a bag full of especially tinned meats, that's what we're looking for, you know, chilies and meatballs, um, hot dogs, things like that, curry, that would be great. And that's going to be at the Woolpack um, on Saturday between 10 and 3, so there's no need to even get out of your car. Um, if you're not yet subscribing to our YouTube channel or Facebook page or our Twitter, please do that. There's lots of stuff going on during the week. We've got morning and evening prayer on Zoom every morning and every evening, apart from Friday evening. Um, we do toddler time at 6 at uh, 10.30 on a Wednesday and Thursday and some other stuff as well. So please do log on. It'd be great to see you. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, for those of you asking what the, what the room keys are, I'll give them out in a minute. But we are going to sing our final hymn, which reminds us that it's all about him. It's all about Jesus. Amen. He alone is our strength. He's our song. He's the reason we're here, the reason we're gathering together, uh, the reason um, that we're living, the reason that we love each other. So we're going to sing that it's in Christ alone that our hope is found on. Let's sing together.
Amen. Let's end with a prayer of blessing. Let's pray. Here in the power of Christ, we stand. And as I was singing that, I, I had a picture um, for, that's maybe relevant for someone watching this morning of, of a pair of really old tatty boots, but they're really comfy. Uh, and, and a sense that that's what you're wearing um, all the time and you're comfortable in them, in them. And the idea that God is calling you um, maybe into a new stage of life to get rid of those comfortable boots, um, to, to get rid of them and, and to put on some new ones that are better fit for the job, that are sturdier and better made. But that, that's a bit scary. I'm getting rid of what you're used to. Um, maybe that's God calling you. Maybe that resonates with you in terms of God calling you into a new life with him. I don't know. But I offer that to you if that's relevant for someone watching this morning. Um, do get in touch if that's for you. But Father God, we thank you that you call us to humility. We thank you for your presence with us this morning. For the blessing of being your people. And Lord, we go in your presence and in your power. And for each of us, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit who empowers us. May you be with us and remain with us always, those whom we love and we pray for. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, that's um, um, the official end of our service this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. I'll stay around here a bit to say hello to you. Apologies again for the, for the cutting off. I want to do my best to pin them both together and put them on YouTube. So if you'd like to watch any of it again, uh, please do. The, the, the kids' Zoom room for you again, Caroline's going to be doing some fun stuff with the children, is um, number 776-4829-9061. I'll type that in there as well. And the coffee room, Liz has put in the comment, 799 567 730. So we'd love to see you on Zoom. I'll put the kids one on here as well, but I'll stay around here a bit to say hello, to have a chat with you. Thanks so much for joining in. I won't see you this week. For those of you that come to morning prayer and stuff, I've got a week off and I'm not here next weekend. Well, I am here, but I'm not at work next weekend. So um, have a great time. I'm sure I'll see some of you out and about in Wellington, probably in Gratitude, which is, re <coughs> Sorry, which is reopened. Yes, it has, hasn't it, Sarah? It's going to be been a good morning. Thanks, Jackie. Good to see you. Oh, thanks, Caroline, to put it on there to save me typing it up as well. A huge thank you, as always, to Debbie and Richard for recording the songs and sending them to us. Such a blessing to have you. Thank you to Nigel and Barbie and Liz for recording our prayers. Kimberly for sharing a testimony. We did do it in one take because um, we managed to pin the children in another room for a couple of minutes. That's good to hear, Fiona. I hope it goes well. Thanks, Julia. Thanks, Lynn. See you later. Thanks, Alice. Yeah, hopefully we will. Hopefully the weather will be a bit better than it is today. Some sunshine will be lovely. Cheers, Claire. Thank you. See you later, Pam. Have a good week. Thanks again, Richard. It was fab. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Rita. See you later. Thanks, Jonathan. Good to see you. And Heather, bless you guys. Bless you, Pauline. Sally, Linda, thank you. Thanks, Rita. Yeah, just to mention this Bible 8 thing again, um, if you're not on our YouTube channel, it's not on YouTube, sorry, well, they'll probably be up there, but if you don't subscribe or follow our Facebook page, do so. Um, every weekday at 8 o'clock, there'll be just a short, I think it's four or five minutes, um, a video on each of the books of the Bible, summing it up and talking about it. They're really good quality. It's with the Bible Society. So that would be great to have you there. Thanks, Clive. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, Deb. Stay safe, everyone. You too, Alice. Thanks, Helen. And yeah, the food bank donation day, I think I saw that is next Saturday, so it's the 20th at the Woolpack Inn in Shawbert. You drive in, pop your boot, we come and get your stuff, and uh, then you drive out again. So it's, it's safe. 
Um, if you've got any prayer requests, um, there's a prayer request um, page on our website. Do comment, do, do fill it in and send it to us and we'll pray for you. If it's your first time listening this morning, an extra special welcome. And there is a, a form you can fill in on our website if you'd like to say hello. So, so please do find that. If you go onto the website and say, I'm here for the first time or just visiting or first time visiting us or something like that, click on it and the welcome uh, form will be there for you to fill in. See ya, Harriet. Maybe on Zoom, who knows? Thanks, Margaret. It's very kind of you. We'll be probably, probably playing in the woods near your house, um, up over at Dot Hill, kind of way, near Abaston, if the sun comes out. Right, well, I'm going to disappear, I think. Um, there's a few of us still left chatting, but I could do with a coffee. I'm going to pop to the Zoom coffee room as well. So do uh, jump in on that if you'd like to. Um, I will just put the Zoom coffee room number down again because we've all been saying hello and the number has disappeared. So if you get a pop onto Zoom, you, you don't have to download it. You can do it just from the website if you search for Zoom. And that's the number for the coffee room and the coffee one. Thanks, Nikki. Well, bless you guys. Like I said, this will be up on YouTube later if you want to catch up on it. Um, but have a wonderful week and I'll see you later. Bye.